All right, so you want to make a distressed wooden flag, but you don't want to cut a million different stripes. You don't want it all bumpy. You want it really smooth like this. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Now, you might not have some of the tools that we have in this video, but don't worry. I will go over different methods to show you how to do this. But first, you're going to need some wood. This is pine here, about one and three quarters thick, 11 inches wide. You can get a 10-foot board. Just cut it down to 34-inch pieces. You're only going to need two of them, and you can see how smooth that is. So the material for this is actually very cheap, and you're going to be able to get that very nice finish. Don't worry about it, though. Again, I will show you a couple different methods of doing this. And there's really not going to be all that much cutting at all. This is probably the easiest method I have ever used to make a flag. Now, you're going to have to get those two pieces of wood together. If you don't have a jointer, that's fine. You can use a planer if you have or a hand planer. Very, very cheap. Or if you make an extremely nice cut on a table saw, that might actually work as well. But once you get those edges nice and flat, flush, well, then you're just going to glue them up and then you can take a belt sander, a regular sander or just some sandpaper with your hand and you're going to basically sand that extra glue off and make sure that you get it nice and smooth because you don't want any creases in this. You don't want to see any lines, nothing. So just sand that glue down real nice like. And once you get that all smoothed out and looking pretty good like it's one solid piece of wood, well, you're ready to start making your flag. What I would do, however, before you start, you know, just take your sander, whether it's a belt sander, hand sander, whatever, and just do the entire front face of that. You want all of that wood to be pretty nice and smooth. You don't want any gouges, any marks, anything like that. Get rid of those. It doesn't have to be crazy. Now, I would go with maybe an 80 grit at first because you're going to end up sanding again here after, but you definitely want to get those marks out of there. All right, my friends, so I'm going to show you how to do it on a CNC, but don't worry if you don't have a CNC or if you don't have Vectric Aspire, I'll tell you other methods throughout the video on what you can do that get sort of the same results on this flag. There's a million different ways of doing things, and I'll try to walk you through them. So if you don't have a CNC, don't worry about it, but if you do have a CNC, we're going to use the Vectric Aspire. Again, you can use any software. Um, you can use your Carbide Create or whatever you're using, your, your X-Car Pro or whatever it's called, um, to do the exact same thing because there's no 3D here. Um, again, if you don't have a CNC, just skip through this, and uh, we'll talk about the other methods. All right. So what we're going to do on the Vectric Aspire is we're going to create a file. This is probably the easiest thing in the world to do. So our width of our fly, because we can cut, I believe, 33 inches. I'm using the Shape Poco Extra Extra Large. You can cut 33 by 33, I believe. Um, but we're going to keep it at 32. And the height, we're going to make the flag, uh, I think it's like 17 inches. Yeah, so the width is going to be 32 inches long, right? And then the height, 17 inches. And then the thickness of 1.75. So whatever material you're using, you would just have to do this or the size that you want, you'd have to change it here. And uh, we can make this out of pine. It doesn't really matter what you put right here, but we'll just go, uh, where's my pine? Right here. And we're going to hit OK. So you can see our dimensions. Again, the easiest thing in the world to do. So let's come over here. We're going to left click this, bring it up here. Drag it down. If you're using your other softwares like the Carbide Create, basically the same exact thing. I'm going to move my face right here. Uh, we're going to hit Apply. And then all we're going to do, close this. We're going to come over here. We're going to click this here. And you would go to uh, 3D Model. So down here, Model, left. Click here. And then we'll just hit Apply. And you can see that gives us our our flag outline right so now what we need to do again very simple we're gonna hit close out of this we're gonna come over here to drawing I'm telling you this is the easiest thing in the world come over here gonna left click this here bring it up to our top left click drag it down doesn't matter how big it is you know on your car by create and stuff you might have to measure these out a little bit and sort of space them out correctly but this right here on the vetric aspire that's why i love this software so easy to use we're just going to left click or not even left click just let go of the left click and then we're just going to uh right click it and then left click it to get out of it so watch this so we're going to come over here left click that again we're going to go to modeling 
we're going to go to array <clears throat> and it's already set up so if you want 12 rows or nine rows or whatever to set it as you want but because this is the u.s flag uh, we're going to have one column three or 13 rows sort of like an excel sheet right and we're just going to hit copy and now check that out so what happens is and you're probably freaking out saying well you know if i left click on these if i group these or whatever we'll shift on that we don't want that um if i left click this if i bring this down well it's too big but it's so simple check this out so i'm going to scroll in we're going to go to 2d view here we're going to open that up let me bring that in now you can see that these stripes are way too big check this out so i'm going to left click that again i'm just going to bring it down like so and watch it'll automatically resize these columns for you it's so easy to do and look you got your stripes that is why i love the vetric aspire where on the carb i create and your x carb <clears throat> program excuse me you kind of have to do this um all by yourself so we'll just hit close now what we can do is um we need the first seven stripes so we're going to go uh, we're going to left click we're going to hold the shift button down actually i don't want to do that let's go let's bring that right back to where it was we're going to go one two three four five six seven okay so there's your seven so now what we're going to do is hit shift come on that click that 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 and that and now we have our seven stripes so just bring it out over to the right so i'm going to left click all those again right click not even right click left click and uh, drag to the right so there's your union and what's so cool about this is <laughs> i mean look at it it's so easy to do um you have to bring that up a little bit oh, right there just want to make sure that it's hitting the entire area so now we have our stripes which we'll carve out but we have to do our union. So all we need to do is one more thing here. We're gonna to go to drawing. We're gonna to go to our rectangle. We're going to come over here, left click on the top corner, drag down to the bottom right corner, let go of it, right click, left click, and that is it. So now what you need to do is just select them all, come over to tool pass, because you can see, let me show you, there's nothing going on here, right? We gotta create our tool path. So I'm gonna left click, I'm gonna drag it down. We're going to go to tool pass, move my face over here. We're going to come over here. We're going to click that. And we can now, I'm just all over the place. Let me move this over here again. So now what we can do is we can set our thickness of material, which is fine. That's good. We'll hit OK. And if you want, you can set your end mill. So I took an end mill. It's an eighth of an inch. Um, Yep, cut depth, you can adjust that if you want. You can go your start depth, you can go like um, 0.5 or whatever, or point, eh, you don't want that, it's point maybe like zero, uh, one zero, and then cut depth and go as deep as you want. I would say probably go maybe, uh, I wouldn't go a quarter inch, but I wouldn't go real shallow either because you're going to be sanding. I would say maybe um, 0 0.150. I think that's good. Uh, we're going to go on the line. We're not going to go inside left or outside right. Make sure you're on the line. Come down here and we'll just hit calculate. And you can see, let me open this up for you. Now you can see that you have your lines here, your stripes. And then we're going to hit preview selected and that's it that is it that's all you have to do so do we have 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 yes we do so we got the 13 stripes and if you want you can do just like i was going to do i'll show you here in a bit with a circular saw you can cut it out or you can just use your tool path which i wouldn't do because you're really stretching if you're making those bigger flags um, you can cut it out that way but i would use the circular saw which i will show you here in a bit um, but that is it and then the star method how you put your stars up there I'll put a card at the end of the video on how to put your stars in there if you already seen that then I'm not gonna waste your time but super super simple to put stars in these unions but that is it now let's make the rest of this flag 
So now that we got it set up on the CNC, we're basically just carving it out. Again, if you don't have a CNC, don't worry about it. But some people like to see it being carved. We're starting out with our lower stripes first. And once you do those lower stripes, it's just going to work its way up higher and higher and higher and getting all those stripes. But you can see that we're leaving some gaps out here on the right hand side, the left hand side, the top and the bottom. That's what's nice about the larger pieces of wood. You know, you have some room to work here. And then you can screw those down right in the corners and don't have to worry about this thing coming up on you. But you can see we're going up higher and higher. And then eventually what's going to happen is it will start doing the union. I think the total cut time for this entire flag was maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And you can see now it's starting to carve out the union. And if you wanted to, you could do more designs on here. You could do, you know, a bald eagle with this Vetric Aspire. I have another video showing you that. You know, you can make your favorite logo on this flag. Do whatever you want with these. You can make them wavy. Now you can see we're starting to finish off the rest of the stripes. And you don't have to worry about cutting any individual pieces with the table saw or worrying about them not gluing up correctly or nailing them. It's just one solid piece. And just a helpful tip when you're looking for wood, you want to make sure that you go with something that doesn't have some crazy horrible knots in them. You can see right here I patched up a piece. I'll show you here in a little bit how you can do that. But yeah, check it out. You got all of your stripes. You got your union. You got your flag basics. If you were to look at that, you would say that's a flag. But let's cut off those extra ends. You can use a circular saw if you want, whatever you want to do. Now, if you don't have a CNC, what you could do, if you have a circular saw, you can make your stripes the exact same way that we just did on the CNC. All you'd have to do is measure them out, set up, set up a straight edge or a long ruler and just go along that as a guide and cut them about an eighth of an inch deep. That's it. That's all you would have to do. But we're going to use a planer here. If you don't have a planer, don't worry. You can use a sander. Again, you can go out and buy a cheap hand planer. You're just going to clean up those edges right there. Take off that excess wood right there. Nice and clean. And we do have a couple dings. We do have a couple issues that we created when we were planing on the corner. So what I'm going to do is take some of that dust that I got out of my sander and I'm just gonna hit it up with some glue, mix it up, and gloop it in there, and that'll dry real nice. And now you can stain that, and you don't have to worry about it, because the wood fillers don't really work all that great. I mean, they'll fill wood, but you can't stain over them. If you paint over them, they're great. You can't stain over them. This right here will allow you to stain if you just put some glue with your dust, and it matches that wood great. So now what we're gonna do is just take off some of the heavier stuff. Don't worry about sanding this down perfectly. We're just trying to take the heavier stuff off, so now we can start staining and doing our stuff here. So just sand her down nice and smooth. What I'm using here is a quarter inch sheet sander. Then I'm just taking a piece of sandpaper and going down in through those stripes so we don't have anything left over on the inside. We want those cleaned out. But again, you can hand sand this if you want. It's not a big deal. So let me state this again. All you're dealing with are straight lines when it comes to a US flag. You can use a circular saw. You can adjust your depth to about an eighth of an inch and just run those straight lines straight down. You can make a union with it or whatever you want to do. But now what we did was we took our black spray paint and we just sprayed it over top. You don't want to go crazy with it. Just spray it over top the entire flag and that black spray paint is now going to set down inside those lines that we cut inside the stripes in between on the CNC or your circular saw, whatever. So use your sander, take that black paint off. I'm using 60 grit right now just to get rid of it. And then I'll go over it again with probably 150, maybe 80 first, then 150, but 150 would be fine. But that black paint will definitely separate all of those stripes where you can see right here. I'm just taking an air hose and blowing that out. Now, if you want to turn this into a distressed flag, you can use a torch. These are very, very inexpensive. You're probably only looking at about $30 at Home Depot. 
just hit it the way you want to hit it. If you want it a little more distressed, hit it a little harder. If you don't want it all that distressed, well, don't hit it as hard. But you want to make it even. Don't let that flame sit right there on the same spot for an hour and a half. Just kind of hit it. It's artwork. You know, no two flags are going to be the same. Just kind of yeah, spread it out there and do your thing. Make it look how you want. You always want to do the burn first before you put the stain on because it just won't look right. You'll discolor the stain. And, you know, if you're using red and hit it with the torch, it might turn green. It just doesn't look good. So hit it with the flame first. Torch it on all ends, the top, the sides. You can even do the back if you want. The bottom. Don't leave anything undone. Now we're using a pre-stained wood conditioner. We're going to hit that up. We're going to let it dry for 10 minutes. And then we're going to go with an oil-based stain. This is the black that we're going on top of the union. What's nice about those lines there is it kind of adds protection so you don't go over to the other stripes. It stops them from you know, transferring over, bleeding over. So just hit that with your black stain. Let it sit for 5-10 minutes. Once it's done, well, you just wipe it off. And then you go with your other stripes here. We're going to go black. If you wanted to do the red, white, and blue, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. But make sure you get your bottoms, make sure you get your sides and your tops. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's stain this up here. And you can already see everything is nice and flat. Everything is nice and smooth. You don't have boards raisined, raising or lowering. You, you don't have any of that issue. So once you get this stain on here, what you're going to have to do is your stars. Now there's a couple different ways of doing this. If you have a CNC, you can program your CNC to do the stars like we have right here and I'll put a video at the end of this video for you to see how to do that very easy way to do it you can also buy a stencil I'll put a link in the description for you that you can use for the stars you just put it right down on top and you can spray paint them you know whatever size you want or you can use a Dremel right use a Dremel to actually go over there and do the stars so whichever way you want to do it you do not have to have a CNC but if you do it's a plus right so if you're making a lot of these well, that might be a good thing to have one of these and you make your money back pretty quickly on these CNC's so just an extra way of doing it now our stars are finished up it took about 35 40 minutes for those stars to be carved out a lot better than a Dremel where it might take you a couple hours but I'm gonna take a tack cloth I'm just gonna go over the entire flag to get all of the dust off of there and then what I'm going to do is hit it with a gloss you can do flat you can do sat whatever you want but we're going with a gloss polyurethane you can even brush this stuff on there just spray it on there give it some protection give it some shine and man it'll just look really really good but what's nice about this method with using the solid board instead of cutting each individual stripe one it's so much easier two it's so much faster and three it just looks so much better at the end of the day because everything is flat it's smooth you don't have one board higher than the other board you don't have to worry about gluing and nailing it's just so much easier and this is the way i will be making these flags well forever now i will never go back to the old way of doing it it is just so much easier again if you don't have a cnc you know, just use a circular saw, cut those lines, use a straight edge, a ruler, or something longer that you can put on that board. You clamp it down and then just run your saw down the lines that you draw about an eighth of an inch and same results. And then just dremel out the stars, paint them on, do whatever you want to do. And uh, there you go. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please smash that like button, get subscribed and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any more of these videos. Appreciate you stopping by. We'll be back more soon.